Well, hey there. Uh, if you've got a few minutes, I want to connect with you here to study some scripture together. Uh, I think that in this time, we've got the opportunity to grow in our relationship with God as well as share the gospel. And I think we can do both. And so I want to take advantage of that time that we've got together. So in times like this, a lot of people begin to question God. Is he good? Um, does he know what's going on? Does he, does he care about us? What is his will? Um, why has he allowed this to happen? And, and you can fill in the blank, and I'm, I'm sure you will. Maybe some of you have been asking those questions already, but I think that sometimes in all of that, we begin to lose sight of who God is. Uh, we begin to lose sight of, of what he expects from us and kind of where he fits in this whole process. And so I wanna take a few minutes today and uh, look at some scripture with you. So if you've got your Bible, your app, whatever you're using, I'd like you to, to go to Exodus chapter 19. And uh, we were supposed to look at this a couple weeks ago. Matter of fact, Riley Cornette uh, was all geared up, ready to speak and talk. And so I'm looking forward to his input on this as we, as we move forward from here. But I want to read a few verses in Exodus chapter 19 to start with. So if you'll follow along with me, it says this. On the third new moon, after the people of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain. Well, Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him out of the mountain saying, thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the people of Israel, you yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. I, I, I wanted us to start here because this is a really big deal for the nation of Israel, right? They're at a point where they're gonna meet God again, face to face. It's gonna be a, a really, really big deal for them. And, and God is preparing them for that. And so he, he fires off with this very first thing that he, he wanted them to remember what he'd done for them. And I, I think if, if you really wanna to, to dive deep with this stuff, um, if you really want to understand God, the, the, the first step is, is remembering what God has done for you. It's the fact that, that you have a history with God. Um, whether you realize it or not, God has been working in your life. God has been doing things. He's been blessing you. He's been providing for you, taking care of you, sometimes correcting you. And a lot of times we can chalk that up to, oh, just fate or this is just how things go. But the reality is that most of that, I think, is God working in our life. And so... Um, I want you to think about this for a few minutes today. Where, uh, where or what has God done for you in the past? Where has God been working for your life? And even if you need to take a couple minutes and, and pause this video and, and write those things down, if you wanna understand anything about who God is or, or anything about what God does or what he's doing, the very first place you've gotta start is just like these people and remember what God has done for you. They had to step back and remember all the things that God had done for them with the, the plagues in Egypt, how God had brought them out, the crossing of the Red Sea, their protection in battle, manna, the, the bread they were eating that was coming down from the sky, um, all the different things that God had done for them up to this point, that they had to remember those things before they could have a proper relationship with God. And I think that the same thing happens for us. Um, so I wanna encourage you to do that for a second. Take a minute, fill in the blanks. What has God done for you? Where has God been working in your life? And I promise you he has you just have to look for it. The second part of this passage that we just read was huge for these people. He makes this statement in verse um, number five. He says, if you will obey my voice and keep my covenant, you should be my treasured possession among all peoples of the earth. He goes on in, in verse number six to explain what that means. He goes, you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Um, these people were already special to him. He'd already called them out. He'd already chosen them and their family for generations had already been special to God. But at this moment, he was gonna raise that level of specialness. He was gonna elevate their um, level of worth to himself. And uh, I, I think that that's a really cool thing for them. Now, our relationship with God is totally different from that. Um, we are not the nation of Israel. Um, we're, we're not Jewish. We don't fit in that category, but our relationship with God is still incredibly special. Um, the book of Hebrews tells us that, that God um, expects us, because of our relationship, to be able to boldly walk up to his throne and get grace and get help in time of trouble, and time of need. That's a big deal. No other time in history have we been able to have the kind of relationship with God that we have now, the ability for us individually to walk up to him or to, to sit down and, and pray and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him. That's never existed before this time, but really before Jesus came. Um, and it's really insane when you think about it that the, the, the God of the universe desires a relationship with you. 
Stop, stop and ponder that for a little bit because I think a lot of times, those, especially those of us that are um, been around church a lot or that have grown up in church, we get used to that fact or that idea that, that God is there and we kind of get immune to it, if you will. Um, and I think we, we can learn some things here about God from this passage and, and, and that is this, that He cares, that He loves. I think that He has our, our best interests at heart even when things are difficult. And I think that applies just as much now as it did before all this stuff happened while you guys were still in school, um, that, that God has always cared, that God has always loved, and that God has always had our best interests at heart, even when things were not what they were supposed to be. Um, I, I want us to move on here and, and look at the next couple verses. So starting in verse number 10, I'm gonna skip a few verses actually. He says, um, the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow let them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people and you shall set limits for the people all around saying, take care not to go up into the mountain or touch the edge of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall be put to death. No hand shall touch him, but he shall be stoned or shot. Whether beast or man, he shall not live. When the trumpet sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people and consecrated the people and they washed their garments. And he said to the people, be ready for the third day. Get ready because you're going to meet God. Prepare yourself. Um, these people were supposed to, to, to do a lot of things in order to do this. And in our time, that looks a lot different. Um, we definitely prefer that you shower before you come to church. Um, please shower before you come to church. We don't want you to stink while you're sitting next to people. Um, but that isn't required like it was for them, for you to have a relationship with God. If you think about it for them, when he sets this stuff here, they were supposed to dress a certain way, make sure they were living their life a certain way, not touching certain things, not doing certain things in order to be ready to meet God. And God has changed a lot of that for us, which is fantastic. Um, but I guess the, the, the question is, or the, the statement I guess that I want to get to for this part is that we have to think about what is required for us to prepare ourselves to talk with God. And I think that all of that comes down to our heart. God doesn't really care what you smell like. He doesn't care what you wear. He's changed things. He's doing things differently now. But he does care about what's going on in your heart. And when we're going to approach God and we're going to want to know more about God and, and dive deeper in a relationship with him, it matters what's happening inside of us. Uh, so the questions I've got for you here in this area, is there sin that you're refusing to give up on? Is there something like that that you know is wrong, that you're holding on to, that you're refusing just to, to let go of? Um, is there a goal or ambition that has distracted you from doing what God wants you to do? Have you let other things crowd out what you know God already wants you to do? And I think that's where most people fall into one of those two spots. Either they've got sin, but they don't want to give up. And because of that, the relationship with God is not where it needs to be and they feel distant from God. Or two, they've got their own plans, their own ambitions, their own desires to do what they want to do. And those things leave no room for God either. And so people wind up in the spot where they feel like God is not close to them. They don't know what he's doing. They can't understand what's happening. They, under, they wonder why is God doing this or why is God not doing that? All of it usually comes back to down either a sin problem or uh, uh, an arrogance and pride that says, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. So as we go through this today, I, I want you to think about that. Um, is there one of those things that's going on with you? And I, I think that we prepare our hearts to worship God by really surrendering them to sur surrendering them to God the same way that these people washed themselves and prepared themselves to meet God. It looks a lot more like, what are you giving up in your heart to understand who God is and to meet God? versus what are you wearing, what do you look like, what do you smell like when it comes time to meet God. So picking up in verse number 16 of, of Exodus chapter 19, it says this, On the morning of the third day, there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast so that all the people in the camp trembled. When Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God and they took their stand, at the foot of, of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended on it in fire. The smoke of it went up like the smoke of a kiln and the whole mountain trembled greatly. And as the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him in thunder. The Lord came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain and Moses went up. Yeah, if you need to go back and reread that passage, um, because it's crazy when you think about it. The idea that, that God is coming down on top of a mountain. Um, it, it says that the entire camp, like everybody, we're talking about a million people here, a million plus. They're scared, literally shaking. Um, 
uh, the, of all this, this craziness that's happening. And when God was ready, he shows up with incredible demonstrations of power and authority. Um, I don't know about you, but I love to go outside with like a thunderstorm, a really bad storm, and, and just watch the thunder and lightning. I know you're not supposed to do that because you might die, um, but I, I think it's cool. I, I enjoy doing that sort of thing. Um, but uh, can you imagine for a second just being at the, at the base of a mountain and seeing an incredible storm descend out of, out of the sky onto this mountain and knowing that God is there and hearing this, this trumpet that's not coming from any human sound. This is coming from God himself. Um, announcing his arrival. Uh, matter of fact, the next chapter, in chapter 20, it says that the people were so terrified that they, they didn't want to get anywhere close to the mountain. Like they get up there and they get freaked out and they all run away and they, they tell Moses, hey, you can go up there, but we are not doing that. We're not going up that way. Um, the, the truth was that they couldn't handle God and neither can you. Um, and we have this idea of, of, of God this way for a long time, of this God that's incredible, that he's powerful, that he's mighty, he's scary. You don't get close to that God, he might kill you. You can't get close to that God because you're not good enough. If you touch that mountain, you're gonna die. We get that whole idea of who God is and what God is over the rest of the Old Testament here. But about 2,000 years ago, God changes that perspective of himself. Um, we, we get, um, when, he, when he sends his son, Jesus, um, he was humble, he was a servant. He didn't come with thunder and lightning and, and with authority in, in that capacity, but he cared about the people that nobody else did. And it, it was impressive, but it was impressive in, in a totally different way. When you think about all of the power that was wrapped up in God on this mountain in Exodus 19, was the same power that was available to Jesus, um, but yet he didn't use it. That whole concept of who Jesus was and what he did becomes even more impressive when you, when you think about that. The, the crazy part is that that God, that same God who showed up in force and power here, the same God that showed up in humility and, and servanthood um, about 2,000 years ago, calls you into relationship with himself. He wants to know you. And I think if we're honest, that most of us want to be in a position that we know God, that we have a good relationship with God, that we feel like somebody or something out there cares about us more than what we have now. Um, and, and I think that he invites you to come alongside of him. And I think that he invites you to do things for a kingdom that's not yours, that's his, that's gonna last for a lot longer than your lifetime. And so what does that look like? And here's what I think it looks like. I think it means sharing hope with people that are scared. If you think about what Jesus did when he shows up, the people he goes to, those were the ones that had really given up on life. They'd given up on society. Nobody cared about them. They didn't really care about anybody. Those are the ones that, that Jesus came to. In the same capacity, in our time, we have a ton of people right now that are scared. Maybe, I, I'm, I know for a lot of students, a lot of students are not scared. And a lot of students are like, like loving life right now, right? You guys get to stay home from school. You can do whatever the heck you feel like. Um, you know, I, I get that side of it, okay? So like, I don't want you to look at this video and say, well, Brad, I'm not terrified, so I don't need to worry about this right now. I get that. But there are people that are around you that are. I'm sure your parents are stressed right now. I'm sure your grandparents are stressed right now. I'm sure the people that live next door to you are stressed right now. I was talking with Nathan uh, Dudley this week, and he said that one of his neighbors just, just lost his job, just got laid off. He's got four little kids. Like, that's stressful. Um, there's people around you right now that, that need hope and you've got it. You can share it with them, if nothing else, by going and simply encouraging them or doing something small for them. Go get the trash out of their yard that blows in or something. I don't care what it is. You figure that out. You're smart people. Um, the second part of this is, is, is physically serving others around you. We see that modeled by Jesus. He didn't just walk around saying, be healed, have a nice day. No, Jesus, Jesus walked up and helped people. He did things for them. He got in their lives. He lived with them, he ate with them, he gave them food to eat, literally. And there's capacities in which you can serve right now that are there. Um, different organizations right now are looking for volunteers. Again, you need to work with that with your parents on that. I don't want you disobeying your parents when it comes to something like that, but I promise you there are things you can do in your community right now to serve those that are around you. The last part of this, and I think the most important part, is that you have to be able and willing to invite others around you into the same relationship with you have. But you have to have that relationship first. And so um, my, my last question for you today is this, are you struggling with your relationship? If you are, um, and, and what I wanna roll out, even if you aren't, I'm rolling this out anyway to you, 
but our governor has asked us for three weeks to stay home and stay safe. Now, I know that for several of you, you or for all of you, you've been at home for the last couple of weeks. So you're like, duh, we've already been doing that. Um, but for the rest of us who aren't like you, who don't get to sleep until noon or one in the afternoon and then watch Netflix all day, um, our, our stuff started starts today, actually um, recording this on Tuesday. You guys will be watching this on Wednesday. So um, here's what I got. I, I think that we have three weeks to turn this around. And so I'm gonna give you what I, I'm calling the, the three, three by three challenge. If you think it's corny, you can get over yourself. But um, it's this, I want you to start with reading three chapters of your Bible a day. I know it seems like a lot, but seriously, what else are you doing? Um, most people I talk to when they say they don't have time to read their Bible, it's like, cause they're so busy or whatever. Well, I'm sorry, but none of you are busy. And if you tell me you're busy, you're lying because you're not. Um, so you got time to read your Bible. So let me encourage you for the next three weeks, every day to read three chapters of your Bible a day. I want you to start in the book of Mark. I'm gonna be posting some stuff on our social media uh, about where to go from there, but three chapters a day. Um, when you're all said and done, you'll get about 33 chapters, or, or I'm sorry, 63 chapters of your Bible done in the next three weeks, which is most of the New Testament. So just think about that. Um, but start in the book of Mark, three chapters a day. I want you to spend three times a day praying for at least 10 minutes each time. This is not just like you sat down with your chicken nuggets for the day and you're like, bless this food and I'm gonna, you know, I don't care, watch Star Wars for the eighth time. Um, I want you to, to take three times of your day, every day for the next three weeks and take about 10 minutes and just pray. Um, thank God for what he's done in your life. Praise him for his goodness. Ask him to help the people that are around you. Ask him to work in your life. And I, I promise you do that, some things are gonna change for you. And lastly, I want you to make three connections a day with people. Um, I want you to focus on people that don't have a relationship with Jesus, uh, but I, you can also reach out to your friends that do as well. You know, I'm just, I want you to hit three chapters a day of your Bible, three times a day in prayer, and then talk to three different people a day, whether they're unsaved or saved friends of yours, to encourage them to grow in their relationship with God. I really think that if you can do that, a lot of things in your relationship with God are going to change. It may be awkward the first few days that you do it, it's gonna feel weird, especially if you're not used to doing something like that. And let me just say too, if you don't like to read, you can listen to those three chapters on an, on an audio book. You don't have to read them. Uh, book. I know some of you just really despise reading. You can, you can listen to them as well. But three chapters a day, three times of prayer a day, and then connections with three different people. And I promise you at the end of three weeks, if you're doing that and you're faithful and you mean it when you do it, your relationship with God is gonna change dramatically in the next three weeks. God is incredible. And he becomes more incredible the more you look for him. And the more you look for him, the more you're gonna find him. I know that sounds kind of like a circular way of looking at things, but that's truly how this is, that, that God is magnificent, that God is impressive. We see that in Exodus 19. We see that in the gospels with Jesus. That God is impressive. He desires a relationship with you. So why not use the next three weeks to grow deeper in that relationship with God and do some things that you wouldn't normally have time to do. They tell us if you can do something for 25 days in a row, you establish a habit. So what better than to walk out of this coronavirus uh, quarantine with habit of, of better godliness and a more committed relationship to Jesus Christ. Check us out on Instagram. We're gonna be posting a lot of stuff there over the next couple of days. And, uh, or we will have posted a bunch of stuff by the time you're watching this video. And we'll be posting something again for Sunday. So stay tuned for that. Follow us or subscribe to us on YouTube. Check us out on, on Facebook. If any of you still use that, I know that's like where your grandparents live now, but hey, you know, maybe talk to grandma every once in a while on YouTube. Don't go to her house um, or go to Facebook. I guess not YouTube because she doesn't know what YouTube is. Either way, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a good rest of your day.